Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I hope maybe all of you know Cambodia or have heard of Cambodia. Uh, it's a country near between Thailand and Vietnam, and it's well known for the ancient temples, mainly Angkor Wat, which was built um, nearly a thousand years ago. Uh, so I'll be quick, and, and just to set the expectation right, this is not a very in-depth uh, analysis paper. It's just a scoping paper, and we have a second paper analyzing the spillover's effect, which, which will be presented by Professor Carol Newman in the afternoon. So quickly on the evolution of the industry in Cambodia. Um, it started early on in the 60s and early 70s, uh, but it was badly disrupted by civil war and the genocidal time between 1975 and 1979. Um, and then after that, uh, Cambodia experienced another decade of socialism backed by Vietnam and Soviet Union. Uh, that time a little manufacturing was resumed um, but most of the factories, are all actually, were owned by the state. And industrial products were only for local consumption. <coughs> then, as Cambodia started to reform in the late 80s and early 90s, with peace resumed, and then it went on to join the ASEAN in 1999 and WTO in 2003. So Cambodia has, in the past two decades, 20 years, enjoyed some prosperity, um, economic growth, average about 8% in the past uh, 20 years. It was set back by the global financial crisis in 2008. Otherwise, now it's back to growing around 7 8%. So it's a, now GDP per capita is about $1,000 um, in terms of tra structural transformation. As expected, it's still high on agriculture, although industry has been picking up. But in terms of employment, still around 70% uh, of the people are engaged primarily in agriculture. And industry still, still employs only about 15%. So we are going to industry now. Um, and this is the, the share of main industries. It predominantly manufacturing, uh, then construction. Now, within manufacturing, you can see that the main part is textile, wearing apparel, and footwear. This started quite recently, following the grant of GSP and MFN by the US and EU markets in the late 90s. Uh, actually, uh, it's predominantly FDI. The companies come from China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Wherever they are, they tend, tend to be Chinese people. Basically, it's dominated by Chinese people. And, and in, in Cambodia, uh, the factories are just like sites, production sites. There are no really decision makers there. If, if buyers want to meet uh, producers, they have to go to Taiwan or China or Hong Kong. Um, so, as a result, we have seen most of the export by commodities are predominantly garments. About garment export alone now is uh, nearly $4 billion. Uh, this just to show ownership of garment factories. Uh, only 9% by Cambodian factories now, and these are mainly subcontracts. Otherwise, these are the countries I mentioned. 
Now, going further into the industrial establishments, which were counted by the economic census in 2011, uh, 37,000 of them. The majority are textile and food, beverages, and tobacco. But most are quite um, small. And, and most are also new. They are less than five, less than 10 years old. And, and majority of these industrial establishments are concentrated in the capital and a nearby province. Now, going back in the past 20 years, we have seen some industries uh, have been experiencing good growth and are likely to go on, but some are considered sunsets. I don't have the time to mention this. These are the major issues. So these are mainly FDI projects. They received very generous tax exemptions. And therefore, it yields little revenue for government. Um, they enjoy tax holiday for seven years, eight years, and by that time, they close down and open again. So <laughs> they enjoy another eight years tax holiday. And they, have, they don't have to pay tax on raw materials, on intermediate goods. So essentially, Cambodia was just desperate to get employment, mostly for the poor from rural areas. And the wage has been quite low. Now, average about uh, $80, $90 per month. But for SMEs, they face very high tax regimes. Therefore, most are informal. And so they don't have good record keeping, they don't have auditing, and banks and equity, equity funds now in the new stock markets find it very difficult to work with them. And there's a little backward and forward linkages within the country. Most garment factories, as I said, just site, production sites of Chinese uh, and ethnic Chinese overseas. They import raw materials, intermediate goods, and we employ our cheap labor to cut, trim, and and then export to enjoy the tax holiday. Also, initially, the market access provided by EU and the US. So Cambodia now needs to diversify industrial base. And they're now developing industrial development policy. Sorry, five minutes? Uh, I need just one minute <laughs> to save more time for you. So in conclusion, um, I think the political stability and location of the country is between China, uh, Thailand and Vietnam, and you know that is a quite a dynamic region close to China and ethnic Chinese groups who are like dominating the garment industry in the region. Um, and the openness policy allowed um, cheap labor and global market access to be well exploited. And that has contributed to high economic growth in the past 20 years. But we now are concerned that for the next stage of high growth, the, we have to depend more on efficiency from both domestically free and fair competition and international competitiveness. Uh, we can't just rely on cheap labor uh, anymore, you know, because uh, the cheap labor has not been enjoying poverty-reducing uh, wage. Uh, thirdly, th this regional integration and globalization has have provided Cambodia with opportunities for constructive engagement and learning to compete. Uh, that is the positive side that we are part of the regional uh, organization and other global bodies, and, and we learn 
from other countries to improve our competitiveness. But uh, in retrospect, I think Cambodia experienced a very wild, turbulent history in the past three, four decades. And it's difficult to expect more. Uh, we have cautious optimism for the future. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>